let's continue can you uh, dictate the question stages why it was something like this why euclid axiom is universal truth okay yes ma'am in question 4 Why is axiom five is the list of the uh, Euclid axiom considered a universal truth? Note that the question is not about the fifth postulate. Let's see. Yes, Why axiom five is universal truth? Now, since axiom five, this term came over here. Of course, I will be asking you, what is axiom five? Yes, they just no. You are not going to tell. Sazia, uh, Farhan is there. Sazia is there. Sara is there. Rumaisha is there. From these, like uh, anyone from here, Farhan. Rumaisha, Sara, Sazi. Who will say what is axiom number five? Farhan, what is ax axiom number five? What is axiom five? Yes, the whole is greater than the part. Okay, whole is greater. The whole is greater than the part. Than the part. Okay, whole is greater than the part. Now here we understand. Of course, it's so logical. Whole is greater than the part, but Same thing we uh, understand with all the axiom, axiom one, two, three. All the axiom is so logical, right? It's observation based completely. So, but why the question is about axiom five is specifically because this axiom five you can relate this axiom anywhere, okay? Not only in mathematics, like anywhere else, you can uh, use this logic that of course the whole is greater than the part. This whole country is country India. If we are talking about India, then we can say the whole country's area is more than any part of it. It's more than uh, any part that is. It's more than Mumbai. It's more than uh, West Bengal's area. It's more than it's more than Delhi's area. Of course, right? Yes. Yes or no? Okay, yes, so this this statement which I have written over here, which is axiom number five, that the whole is greater than the part, it is not limited to mathematics. It is applicable everywhere, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's why that's why we are saying it's a universal. Thing. So you, how you we will answer this question? We can say that. Whole is greater than part. This is axiom number six. Axiom, uh, sorry, axiom five. Fine, axiom five is the whole is greater than part. This is applicable everywhere. Not. Just in mathematics, for example, uh, they just said the whole pizza is greater. It's more than the part of the pizza. Okay, for example, if you want to give example, for example, a whole pizza. 
is more than in bracket we'll be writing greater than a part of it hence it's hence it's a universal truth got it yes sir yes ma'am yes ma'am let's continue okay okay now we'll be discussing postulate ma'am postulate twice with the base right the main yes yes here few like before starting this postulate few things are there which i want to discuss over here i have seen questions from that portion also just a second now question number 1 is in mcq question this type of question i have noticed that this word euclid's geometry this chapter we are discussing over here yes ma'am now what is the meaning euclid is mathematician and what is what is the meaning of this geometry so can you Geometry. see this geometry geometry is just the combination of geo and metry and geo means earth right yes geo means earth and metry and means, means measure as a okay so if this type of fcq question will come that this terminology means what option a this option b this option c this so you should understand geometry geo means earth metry means measure so basically we are trying to measure something hence we are talking about so many different types of shapes their measurement and everything right yes ma'am now the next question i have noticed over here that that is thales was das mathematician was he from he was from where is it or what so we have already discussed euclid euclid yes euclid was from egypt thales was greek mathematician greek mathematician note down if you don't know these are the question which can come in your exam okay and when at first thales has given the very first the very first proof from mathematics from geometry part he has given thales has given that was that was diameter diameter bisect the circle just a second let into me write the terminology parts. into equal we already know we already know when we are drawing a diameter and if you will cut it from the diameter you will be getting two semi circles okay and yes diameter diameter bisect a circle into equal part that theorem 
was given by Thales and the proof also he has given for the very first time. Okay, yes, so Thales was Greek mathematician. He has given this theorem. These are the few history, the history of mathematics which we need to know. From here, question can come like fill in the blanks, question two, first question, MCQ question. Because in this chapter, we don't have so many questions from which is which are related to axiom and postulate. Very limited questions are there, which we will be so we have already solved. And if uh, I'll find new question, we'll be doing it together over here only. So very limited question are there, and there is not like uh, that much scope to just do twist and turn to the question. Okay, so that's why these history part can also come in the exam. Okay. Yeah, this is what just I wanted to discuss. Now let's continue with the postulate. So the way you all have learned the axioms, same way here you will be learning the postulate. Now, before starting postulate and before starting learning new uh, things, first, each and every one, quick, 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 please tell me all the seven axioms. Who will start? Raise your hand. Can I say? Let me just start. Yes, they just start okay things which are equal to the same things are equal to one another if equals are added to equals the holes are equal if uh, equals are subtracted from equals the remainders are equal if things coincide with the same uh, if things coincide with one another uh, one another are equal uh, yeah are equal with one another the whole is greater than part the thing uh, the things which are double of the same things are equal to one another things which are uh, things which are half the same things are equal to one another perfect now if ra ma'am i have learned postulate one also and two okay they just we will be starting just now yes if ra okay. Your mic is not working. Okay. Uh, Farhan. Yeah, sure. You can write it over here. Meanwhile, yes, Farhan. Tell me all the axioms. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Things which are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. If equals be added to equals, the holes are equal. If equals be subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. Things which coincide you... with one another, one another are equal to one another. Yes. Oh, please wait now. Can you please uh, turn on your camera first? Yes, everyone, please turn on your camera first. Yes, yes, Farhan, please continue. Yes, Farhan, please continue. Yes, ma'am. Continue. Things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. The, the whole is uh, greater than the part. Yes, double. Double the size of it. Which was axiom number six? Which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. Things which are things which are half halves of the same things are equal to one another. That was the last one, seventh one. 
he has forgotten in sixth month. So things, say, things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Yes. Uh, yes, Rumaisha, please tell me from the very beginning. Um, things that are equal to uh, things which are equal to the same things are equal to one another. Things which are added to the same things are equal to one another. Uh, if equals are subtracted from equals, the whole uh, the reminders are equals. Things which coincide with one another are things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. Um, the holes the whole is greater than the part things which are half of the same things are equal to one another things which are double of the same things are equal to one another yes perfect uh, sazia yes ma'am uh, things which are equal to the same things are equal to one another Things, uh, things which are added to equal, uh, equals. If equals are added to equals, the whole will be equal. If equals are subtracted from equals, the remainder will be uh, equal. Uh, things which coincide with uh, one another are equal to one another. The whole is greater than the part. Uh, things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Things which are half of the same things are, are equal to the one another. Yes, Sara. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. If equal is added to equal, the whole is equal. If equals are subtracted to equal, the remainder is equal. Things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. The whole is greater than the part. part. Things which are double of the same thing are equal to one another. And things which are half of the same thing are equal to one another. Okay, let's continue with the postulates. Since you are done with the axiom part, you already let me read axiom one equal to the same thing or equal to one another. Things which are equal to subtracted or coincide with or equal the whole greater than the part. Things which are double of the same thing are equal to one another. Things which are half of the same thing are equal to one another. Yeah, done. Now we'll be discussing postulate. And the way you have learned axiom, axiom number one is this, axiom number two is this, axiom number three is this, axiom number four is that. Similarly, you need to learn postulates also. Okay, postulates also. In class, the first class only, we have discussed that uh, axiom and postulate exactly is the same thing. But this axiom, this terminology postulate will be using in geometry. Axiom can be used anywhere. So postulate we are going to discuss given by Euclid. So postulate number one is pages you have already learned it. Can you please tell me? Mama, straight line may be drawn from one point to uh, another point. Straight line. First, we will try understanding what exactly the statement says. And then you all have to learn it. Okay, a straight line. May be drawn. From. And there are only five postulates, right? Yeah. Any one point. Two. And other point. So postulate number one says a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Okay. If we are having, if we have to draw a straight line, then it can be drawn from one point to other point. Basically, if we, I write, you could say that to draw a straight line, we need two points. That's what this statement says. That to draw a straight line, to draw a straight line, two points are needed. Or, or if already you are having two points, then at least one straight line we can draw upon. According to postulate number one, the statement says that if you are having two points, two, any random point, then 
you can draw one straight line by joining them. Okay. In this postulate, Euclid has not specifically mentioned that one and only one straight line we will be drawing. However, later on in his axiom, he has explained that that if we are having two points, then only if you are having two points, then one and only one straight line can be drawn. Okay, and if you will try making more straight line, it won't be straight. You check it. If you will join this two point anyway, it won't be a straight line. Only one, a single one and only one straight line we will be able to draw. If any two points we are having, getting it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this statement is trying to say the same thing that with the help of like if we are drawing a line, two points are needed or with the help of two point, one line can be drawn. But here specifically it is not mentioned that that only one and one straight line we will be able to draw. That Euclid has explained later on in his one of the axiom and that axiom is axiom number 5.1. Let me write it over here. He has just explained it in this axiom. I'm writing the axiom over here, just a second. Axiom. Here he has explained that given two distinct points, Given two distinct points, there is unique line that passed through them. If we are having two distinct points, that means two different points. Distinct means different point. If we are having, then there is unique line. Unique means one and only one line, one straight line you will be able to draw. Okay. If you two points are given, then one and only one line you will be able to draw. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So postulate number one is. A straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. A straight line may be drawn from any one point to other point. Okay? Any one point to any other point. Here, specifically, he has not mentioned. However, later on, he has explained in the axiom number 5.1 that if we are having two distinct points, then there is a unique line. Unique line that passed through them. Okay? More than one, we won't be able to draw. If you will join point A with point B, you will be getting just one straight line. And again, if you are trying to join them anyway, then those lines will not be straight. That's what he said. Getting yes. it? Yes, we've got it. Okay. So these two statements you need to learn because who knows? Maybe in, ex in exam, postulate one, postulate two, three, four, five, it can come... Or maybe this axiom 5.1 can come anywhere. Ma'am, uh, uh, like there are seven axioms, right? So half uh, axiom 5.1 came. Um, see, uh, Tejas, yeah. there are not only seven axioms. In your syllabus, only seven is mentioned. Okay, so many axioms, so many postulates Euclid has given. Few, very few are mentioned in our chapter and we need to stick to just those. So that's why uh, you can see over here. And one more thing, one more thing that the axiom which we are having in our syllabus, like we are learning it, number one is this, number two is this, number three is this, but these are not well arranged, taken from the like Euclid's the way Euclid has given so many axioms, so many axioms. So exactly one by one, we have not taken from there. Okay, since it is written like this in our syllabus, we are learning it like this. That number one is this, number two is this, number three is this. Maybe, maybe from 
from the uh, Euclid's axiom part where he has written all the axiom. Randomly, we have taken the first one and then any any number from the middle and then any number from the last we have taken. And we are just mentioning number one is this, number two is this, number three is this. Okay. So these are not well arranged. That is mentioned in our book also that here are few axiom not well arranged. But, but we learn it number by number by number so that uh, we can mention by solving the theorem along with the number we can mention the axiom also okay okay thank you yeah so yes 5.1 so many axiom this is also one of the axiom here the number is mentioned 5.1 read it given two distinct point there is unique line that passed through them so now you have to if if the if the understanding part like that is okay if you understood what the first statement says what the second statement says both says the same thing first statement says that if we are having two point we will be able to draw a line second statement says there is a unique line one and only one line we will be having okay now read it carefully you you have to tell me one by one postulate number and one is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. postulate one is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point okay however in axiom 5.1 it is mentioned that given two distinct points there is a unique line passed through them Okay, so postulate number one is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Okay, a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. And the elaboration of that is there in axiom, which says that, which says that given two distinct points, given two distinct points, there is a unique line passes through them. Will you be able to tell me one by one? Yes, ma'am. It is. A straight line may, uh, may be drawn from uh, any, any one point to another point. Given two distinct points are uh, a unique uh, line and they passes through them. Given, given to this thing point, there is a unique line that passes through. Yes. Sara. Yes. Sara. Your voice is speaking. Okay, no worries. Rumaisha. Any um, a straight line may be drawn from one uh, any a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Uh, axiom number five point one says given to I distinct, didn't learn that. Given to distinct point, given to distinct point, two different point, there is a unique line passes through them. Tell me, repeat it. Given two distinct points. I didn't learn that. Even if I am saying uh, you just after me, you cannot uh, say the same thing. Try it. Ma'am, can you show me once? I will learn. Okay. Given two distinct points. Distinct means different. Given two different points, there is a unique line that passes through them.
given two given two distinct points there is a unique line that passes uh, through them okay perfect yes ifra you told me that now your mic is working please unmute yourself and tell me what is postulate number 1 and the explanation of that is there in axiom please tell me both yes ma'am postulate one state start a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point and axiom 5.1 states that given two distinct points there is a unique line that passes through them perfect farhan yes farhan yes ma'am yes what is postulate number 1 Yes, Farhan. Postulate one is. Ma'am, the postulate one is uh, any two any two points. A straight uh, line. A, a straight line can be drawn from any one point, uh, any one point to another point. Axiom five point one says that. Yes, axiom five point one says that. Yes, for one given two distinct point. There is a unique line that passes through them. Okay. Let's continue. Postulate two. Yes, Tejas. What is postulate number two? Ma'am, a terminator line can be uh, a terminator line can be produ uh, produced produced uh, indefinitely. terminated line can, can be produced indefinitely okay a terminated line can be produced indefinitely what does that mean that mean is that mean is terminated this terminology if you have attended my class i always the even if you have not attended my class you should know this terminated terminated this this terminology you must have seen in the decimal number terminated decimal number and terminated yes, decimal sir. number right so termination means stoppage okay stoppage so terminated line means ruka hua line jisko hum log line segment bhi bolte hain terminated line means a line which is having two end point that is called terminated line and it means that uh, seg the line segment can be uh, extended either any side right? any one side exactly exactly okay terminated line means ruka hua line jisko hum log bolte hain line segment it is known as line segment a, a line which is having two end point is called line segment so same thing previously it, it, like uh, there was a terminology for that line that is terminated line now we call it as a line segment now the statement says that a terminated line can be produced indefinitely that means we can be produced means this terminology whenever it, it will be there in mathematics produced means extended okay produced indefinitely means from any side we can extend it till infinity from any side 
like maybe from the left maybe from the right maybe from both side we can extend it from any side till infinite that's why this terminology indefinitely is there okay terminated line can be produced indefinitely yes ma'am yes ma'am okay terminated line means line segment of course we can extend this line segment from many direction whatever we want if you want to extend it from the left extend it if you want to extend it from the right extend it till where it is possible till infinity it is possible Okay, and that's what this postulate also says. So, if the concept is clear, the statement is clear to you. Again, we will be repeating the same process. You have to tell me what is postulate number one. You have to tell me the explanation of that which is mentioned in axiom five point one. You have to tell me postulate number two. If you want to go through it, I will be showing it to you. Again, I can explain it to you that postulate one says a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. A straight line can be drawn from any one point to any other. The same thing is given in axiom five point one, but here more precisely the sentence is here that is given to distinct point. There is a unique line. Unique means one and only one line that pass through it. Okay. Now, postulate two: a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. I'm done. Okay. Done. Let's start. Who will start? I'm coming. Yes, sir. A straight line, uh, a straight line may be drawn from one, one from any point to another point. Uh, it given to uh, given, given to distinct point. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. one. There is a unique line that passes through them. A terminated line can be a, a terminated line can be produced uh, indefinitely. Perfect. Yes, one. Now, if uh, yes, ma'am. Postulate one states that a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Axiom five point one says, given two distinct points, there is a unique line that passes through them. Postulate two says that a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. Perfect. Maisha. Yes, ma'am. A straight line, uh, a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Uh, given given to indefinite line, uh, there is a unique line that passes through them. Postulate number two. Uh, uh, given to distinct. Point. Okay, ma'am. Uh, a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. Uh, Sazi. Straight line may be one by one. Uh, uh, can be one by one. Uh, can be one by one. Can be one by one. Can be one by one. Can one Post, yes. uh, postulate number one, a straight line may be drawn from any one point to an, another point. Um, uh, given two distinct points, there is a unique line that passes through them. Um, a, a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, this is how you have to do it. Now... The next postulate, I'm keeping this much open, okay? Because uh, next postulate require explanation and after giving the explanation, I don't want to leave it. I I'm want sorry. to just, yes. Third one is? No, I'm nothing wrong. Do you know they just want to start? Yes, ma'am. A circle can be drawn with any center or any radius. Exactly. Okay, I'll be explaining from the third one in the next class. Uh, wait. 
postulate we will be able to cover in the next class today uh, assessment is not there assignment i will be sending okay and yeah meanwhile just wait over here wait meanwhile any time i can ask you any question from here like what is uh, any random number axiom what is axiom number 5.1 or maybe what is axiom what was axiom 3 or maybe what was axiom 4 okay random postulate yeah postulate also i'll be asking from next okay. class we will be starting with the postulate only okay first you have to tell me the postulate and then just a second Next class, we will be starting. First, you have to tell me the postulate and then we'll be cutting. Okay. And I think in the next class, we will be done with this complete topic. Question part, if it will be remaining, we will be solving it. Next class or after that. Uh, yeah. Next class or maybe after that, uh, one more class will be done with this complete concept you and yeah here we have done the detailed discussion of euclid's geometry now you will never ever say that yes. this chapter is difficult right or yes, you right. don't understand this chapter what exactly is there in this particular chapter it doesn't like make sense or it is not that clear this type of a statement you will not give any time right Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, yeah. We'll be yes, continuing with the postulate and a few remaining questions. And, yeah, keeping it this much. Let's continue the same in the next class. Till then, take care Thank of you yourself. Me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rumaisha, yeah, Ifra. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you, everyone. Sazia, oh, for all. Thank you so much. Yes, Sara. You are having confusion in few questions, right? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, can you please send it? Uh, the questions. I don't have my mom's phone right now. Okay, so you are going to dictate the question? I think I can send it. I can go ask my mom. Yeah, please send it. Uh, that will be helpful to me also. I can see all the questions in one go and then we quick, 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 we'll be taking it over here. Okay. Where do I send it? On the same WhatsApp number uh, through which you get the assist, uh, assignment and everything. To our operation team, you send it. I'll be getting it from. Okay, I'll just go be right back. Yeah, sure.
I just sent the questions. Yes, Sarah, you have sent, right? Yes, ma'am. Question is from which topic? Some of them are lines and angles and some of them are number system and polynomials. So it's from class test or what? It's my holiday homework. Question number. Yes, Sara, which question from here? One, number one. Um, only the questions I've sent. Again, you have sent. Uh, actually, I have got the question from the very beginning. Two worksheets are there. Oh. Two worksheets are there and uh, 10, 10 questions, uh, wait, 2020 20 questions are there. Can you tell me the question starts with what? Uh, the 16th one in the first worksheet 16 and 17 is it is it re o a o b o c o e is it this yes, one? That one yeah 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 the figure is not given right yeah it's not given so number 16 re o a o b o c o e have Common initial point O A O B It's talking about angle A O B O C O E Maybe maybe this is how the figure looks like. We are not sure. Later on, while marking the angle which is given over here, that this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, all together is 360 degree, then we will realize that whether our figure is correct or not. So there is a ray OA, there is a ray OE, OB, OC, OE, all the ray has common point that is O. Show that angle AOB plus angle. Angle BOC, this angle, yeah. plus angle COD, okay. OD is also there, COD, DOE, and E. All added together is 360 degree. That's what we have to show. Okay. This is, of course, this is how our figure will look like. Sara. C. O. A. O. B. O. C. 
O D O E okay and this complete angle we have to show that angle I am writing it over here check it A O B plus angle B O C plus angle C O D plus angle D O E plus angle E O D all added together is 360 degree which we already know we have to show it right right Sara yeah okay so let's continue let's see how can we do so so there is linear pair axiom is there then what else was there or uh, just inside uh, there was an axiom that if a ray is standing on a line just a second let me draw the figure properly then we, we will be able to use that particular theorem this is how our figure looks like since no other information is given we have maintained this a o d as a straight line can you see yes okay now we will say that now we will say that a, a ray is a standing a ray o c okay let's take let me remove the camera Ray O C stands on line A D or D A. Therefore, sum of adjacent angle can be said that this angle and this complete angle will be 180 degree. Can we say Sara? Can we forget yeah. about this ray? Forget about this ray for now. Can we say? Yes. That these two are making linear pair. We can say, right? Yeah. Let's write it. That angle. Angle. COD. Plus angle. A O this completely is 180 degree. Beside that, you can write linear pair. Okay. Now A O C is just the combination of B O C and A O B. Yes or no? Sara. A O C just is just the combination of this two, right? Yes. So let's write it. It is nothing but just the combination of B O C plus A. This all added together is one degree. This much information. Let's say this is equation number one. And similarly, similarly, on the other side we are having a ray OE stands on a line AB. So we can say that we can say that angle DOE plus angle AOE is also 180 degree. Beside that, you can write linear pair or you can write it properly the theorem. A ray OE stands, ray OE it stands on line AD. Therefore, sum of adjacent angle, therefore, like T H E R E F O R E like that you have to write not like this. Therefore, sum of adjacent angle 
is 180 degree. Either you can write this complete statement or you can write this to a making linear way. Okay. Now we will add equation 1 and 2 and we will be getting what we are supposed to prove. Right, Sarah? Yes, ma'am. So we are done. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is how we will be doing it. It is crystal clear that, yeah, it will be 360 degree. But how to prove that we are taking the help of linear pair? That's it. Okay, let's continue. Can I yes, scroll sir. down? Yeah. Okay. So if, a trans okay. if a transversal intersect, I'm not writing the question because you are also having the question in front of you, right? Yeah. Here it says that a transversal intersect two lines such that bisector of pair of corresponding angle are parallel. Then prove that two lines are parallel. Okay. Here there is a bisector of corresponding angle. This angle and this angle are corresponding angle. Right, Sara? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so there are two lines. The name of the lines are PQ and RS. We don't know whether these two lines are parallel or not. Okay, there are just two lines, random two lines, PQ, RS. We are not sure whether these two lines are parallel or not. And I have uh, explained it in my class that even if these two are not parallel, still these two black color angles are called corresponding angle, right? Right? Yes, ma'am. If this two will be parallel, then corresponding angle will be same. If this two will not be parallel, then corresponding angle will not be same. Right? Yes. Okay. So, there is a bisector of corresponding angle and there is another bisector of the other corresponding angle. Now, these two are parallel with each other. Previously, PQ and RS are parallel or not? We, we don't know. We don't know this PQ and RS are parallel or not, but we know that the bisector of corresponding angle, this BE, is parallel to this CG. Getting it, Sara? Yes. And hence, we have to show that PQ is parallel to RS. Let's see what can turn over. So if you will focus on this two purple color line, which are parallel to each other which are parallel to each other. Let me make it bold. Apart from that, what else we know? We, these two are parallel, we know. And we also know that this is a corresponding angle which is getting bisected. So, corresponding angles are getting bisected by this line BE. If this is X, this is also X. If this is Y, this is also Y. Right, Sarah? Yes, ma'am. That's much information we already having. We have to show that PQ is parallel to R. Now, if we will focus on this two, two line, if we will focus on there is a two line which are parallel to each other and there is something, uh, this type of line is there which acts like a transversal over here. Now, now, can we say that, just a second, can we say that, let me wipe the remaining part, then maybe it will make sense to you. Can you see two parallel lines and the transversal one? Can you see, Sara? Yeah. Okay. Now, here, which angle we are getting? Can we see that these two are parallel and there is a transversal? Then x will be equals to y. Can we? Yeah. We can see that, right? Y parallel line concept that this one and this one looks like corresponding angle. Right? It is exactly on the same place. So, of course, x will be equals to y. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's write it. Let me draw the previous line. So, so.
so we will see that let's let's assume angle Okay, B, this is it. Q completely is 2x. Okay, and hence it is getting bisected. Therefore, angle A, B, E is same as angle B, E, Q is equals to x. Any confusions are there? No. Okay, let's try it for the other one also. That we are assuming that as a y, then we will say x is equal to y. So, angle B, C, S, completely we are assuming as a 2y, and hence, and hence, angle B, C, G is equal to angle G, C, S is equal to y. Any confusion? No, ma'am. Okay. So, since to C G A B G and also and and A what is the name? A D A D is transversal, right, Sara? Yes, ma'am. Therefore, therefore angle A B E equals to angle BCG. There is only an angle. That means X is equals to Y. Right? Yes, ma'am. That means we can say that 2X is equals to 2Y. Here we will write multiplying 2 on both sides. We are allowed to do multiplication in equation, right, Sara? When x is equal to y, of course, 2x and 2y will be equal. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and hence, hence, can you see the corresponding angles? We are having two random lines. Random line. The name of those random lines are P, Q and R, S. And there was corresponding angle, the black color angle, I am marking it with green. The black color angle, I am marking it with green. This two was corresponding angle. But that time it was not seen. That's why we are not saying that P, Q and R, S are parallel. But now it is seen. Can you see? So can we say hence P, Q will be parallel to R, S? Yes. Yes, we can say now. Okay, we will write it properly. That P, Q and R, S are two lines, two random lines. Okay, two random lines. And there is a transversal A, D. And A, D is transversal. Such that this two are corresponding angle, angle A B Q and angle B C S. Angle A angle yeah, and angle A B Q and angle B C S are pair of corresponding angles. This two were corresponding angle. The name of this two angle was corresponding angle. And just now we found that this two are equal also. Okay. This two are equal also. ABQ is equal to BCS. Corresponding angle which was the name. Now it is same. Therefore, PQ must be parallel to RS. How we are saying it same? From equation number this. 2X is equal to 2Y. That means angle ABQ is equal to angle BCS. Are you getting it, Sara? Yes, ma'am. 
Is it crystal clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is how we work. And therefore, if you must be parallel to a corresponding angle of equal, of course, those two lines which was random line must be parallel line because the correspond pair of corresponding angle are equal. Any confusions or no, no. Next question. The same worksheet, the seventh question. Find the remainder when f of x is divided by gx. f of x is this one. Okay, if we have to find the remainder, Sara, f of x is mean x to the power 2 minus 3x to minus 2x square plus x minus 7 and g of x is x minus 1. Okay, if f of x we are dividing by g of x, then there is a magical formula called the remainder theorem that day I was explaining. From your divisor, you will be finding the zero. Okay, so what will be the x value you will be getting from your x minus 1? 1. 1. Yes, 0 of gx is x equals to that you will substitute it and f of x and directly you will get the remainder. Directly. Let's substitute. Now, f of x is 4x to the power 4 minus 3x to minus 2x square plus x minus 7. Now, here at, at the place of x, we will be substituting 1. So, f of 1 will be 4, 1 to the power 4 minus 3, 1 to the power 3 minus 2. 1 to the power 2 plus 1 minus 7. Let's do the calculation. Directly we will be getting the remainder. The remainder theorem says that from the divisor, take out the x value, substitute it in the dividend. Directly you will be getting the remainder. Okay. 4 minus 3 minus 2 plus 1 minus 7. Minus 5. 4 minus 5. Plus one minus seven. That is negative one, positive one, minus seven. So here we are getting remainder directly as a minus seven sum. Can you see it? Even if a student were saying that remainder theorem is not there in their, their syllabus, still I have explained that because that is very important and I can see if that is there in your syllabus. Can you recall Sara? I was explaining it during class. Yeah, I remember. Okay. So, we will be taking out 0 from the 0 of the divisor. We will be substituting it in the dividend and directly we will be getting the remainder. See, calculation part, please check it one more time that whether we have written the function properly or not and the calculation we have done properly. Okay. This, uh, these are the steps which we need to follow. Is it the yes. Okay. The next one is the seventh one, same worksheet. No, wait, tenth one, tenth one. Z is square plus one by z is square. This is the last one I'm experiencing. Uh, I will ask my team how many more questions you are having. Um, let me check. I have four more questions. Okay, I will ask my team to arrange uh, one extra class and then we will cover those. Okay. Okay, so uh, z is square plus 1 by z is square is given to you, that is 14. And yeah, we are supposed to find, 
we are supposed to find z cube plus 1 by z cube. Now, if you will recall that day I have written the list of the formula, right, Sarah? And in that formula list, this formula was there, x cube plus y cube. That was x plus y in one bracket. And in the other bracket, can you tell me, Sarah, what was the formula? x square minus xy. Check it. Check the formula page. The identity page. Who was present in that class? Right, Sarah? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll go get it. This formula I have written over there that x cube minus x cube plus y cube formula. X plus y in one bracket, in the other bracket, x square minus xy plus y square. Right? Yes, ma'am. This, this part we are already having in hand, that is 40. Can you see in the other bracket we are having z squared minus z, z into 1 by z, that will get cancelled out and we will be left with z squared minus 1 plus 1 by z squared. Can you see? So next bracket is sorted. z squared plus 1 by z squared is there. Which we can put the value that z squared plus 1 by z squared is 14. And minus 1 is there, we will be able to do the calculation. But the first bracket is the confusion, what to write over here. Right, Sara? Right? Yes. What value we must substitute over here. So let's find it. We know z plus 1 by z whole square formula will be, will be a square plus 2ab, 2 into a into b, plus b square, right, Sara? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then 2 into z into 1 by z will be what, Sara? This one. It will be 2, just 2, yes. z square plus 1 by z square value we already know 14 plus 2 16 that will be z plus 1 by z whole square any confusion so far no, no. but we want to calculate just z plus 1 by z not a square so what we will square root we will find and that will be 4 plus minus 4 will be there, but we'll be taking positive 4. Okay? Any confusion? No, ma'am. That this z plus 1 by z value we can substitute over. Z a cube x cube plus y cube formula we have written. After writing the formula, we realize the second bracket is sorted. The first bracket is creating the problem. What to put at the place of z plus 1 by z? Then what we will do? 